For any movie buffs out there, you know the Toronto International Film Festival took place a few weeks ago, albeit with a little less glitz and glam than usual. But there was still an incredible slate of films that premiered. And at the forefront, films from and by BIPOC artists. Our pop culture expert Kathleen newman Bermang has rounded up the titles that she says are must-watches. And Kathleen, we're starting with One Night in Miami, which is... Regina King's directorial debut. Did you love it? Ooh, I loved it. I mean, first of all, I love Regina King. So props to her, Academy Award winner, four-time Emmy winner, Regina King. And now she's going to direct it. It's like, what she, what can't she do? Uh, so this film is based on a play by Kemp Powers, and it is the story of the night Muhammad Ali, back when he was known as Cassius Clay, um, when he beat Sonny Liston to become the heavyweight champion of the world. So the real story is we know that Muhammad Ali went to a hotel room to celebrate with Malcolm X, Jim Brown, who was a very famous football player, and Sam Cooke, the legendary musician. So that's all we know. Then Kemp Powers wrote this story about what these legendary men, what these black celebrities, what conversations they may be having in that room that night. And the four actors that play these roles, you're going to be hearing a lot about them if you don't know their names already. This film won the runners up for the People's Choice Award at TIFF. And those films usually go on to the Academy Awards. And so I actually think all four of these performances are worthy of recognition. So we'll see in April of 2021 um, if that happens. If your next up is Concrete Cowboy. Tell us about this one. Yeah, I mean, this one kind of flew under the radar at TIFF, which I don't understand why, because it's starring <laughs> Idris Elba. Um, and it's directed by first-time director Ricky Staub, and it tells the story of Harp. He's a cowboy, played by Elba and his estranged son, Colt, played by Caleb McLaughlin, um, who you will know from, um, from Stranger Things, but he has completely grown up in this role. He's gonna make you feel a little bit old. You'll be like, that's the kid from Stranger Things. <laughs> um, but it's this stunning film about family reconciliation, about this father and son, and one of America's most unique subcultures. Get this, there are black horse trainers on the streets of North Philadelphia, it's called the Fletcher Street Staples. They've been around for generations. And so this story really gets into that culture, which is, you know, black cowboys have been erased by pop culture. Um, and it's just so incredible to see that world depicted on screen. This one's getting big buzz. It's called Beans. Yeah, this one has my heart. We've actually talked about Mohawk director Tracy Deer on this show before because she was a producer on Mohawk Girls a TV show that I have recommended before. Um, and now she's written and directed her first film, Beans. And it's, it's the story of a 12-year-old girl who's nicknamed Beans. And it's just this harrowing, necessary, coming-of-age story set against the backdrop of the 1990 Oka crisis in Quebec. And so this story is based on her experience of coming of age through that. And when I talked to her about it, she got really emotional. And she said it was 30 years in the making. And she wanted to tell the story that girls like beans don't get to come of age without the brutality of anti-Indigenous racism. And again, it was one of the runners up for the People's Choice Awards at TIFF. And Tracy Beans also won the Emerging um, Artist Award at TIFF. So know her name. Watch this movie. It will break your heart, but in, in the best way. I understand why now this is on the big screen, because this is a moment, you know? So thank you for uh, putting that on our radar. The next one, Halle Berry's directorial uh, debut. She also stars in it. It's called Bruised. Yeah, you know, I had to give love to Halle Berry for this because, yes, as you mentioned, she directs it. She also stars in it, and she plays this disgraced MMA fighter named Jackie Justice. Love that name. Um, and she kind of has this one shot of getting back in the game right after she finds out that her six-year-old son is coming back into her life. Um, and this is a story of redemption, and she does a really good job for her first time out, and this performance is great. She cracks ribs uh, playing this role. Wow. She's 54 years old, and you watch this movie, and you're like, how are you doing this, Hallie? But I also wanted to give love to her because we know how hard it is for Black women in this industry. We know how hard it is for Black women who have won Oscars. Mm -hmm. in this industry. And Halle Berry 
really has had this fascinating but also heartbreaking career arc after she won her Oscar. And now she's kind of taking these roles back into her own hands, which is why she directed this film. And hearing her talk about it, you can just hear the passion. You can hear that she's in this kind of third act of her life and her career. And she she wanted this role to be the thing that kind of brings her back. And it got this huge Netflix deal because of TIFF. Um, Netflix bought it, and so we don't have a release date yet, but look out for it on Netflix. I want you to just mention quickly uh, Inconvenient Indian. Can you give that a bit of a shout out? Yeah, so it won the Best Documentary Award at TIFF, and just very quickly, it's Michelle Mat Latimer's film, and it is, like we just talked about with Beans, the story of the continued colonization and oppression of ind Indigenous people in North America. Um, you have to watch it. If you watch it, there is no way you can say that you didn't know or that you know you're ignorant to any of the things indigenous people are going through so i say it's a must watch mm -hmm. they're all must watches thank you so much kathleen adding each and every one mm -hmm. to my must watch list